Hey guys, this is Daryl O'Connor from Planet Mosh here on Planet Mosh TV on YouTube, and this is my interview with Andy Flags, Justin Zane. Brilliant. Okay, well, before we start, I just need to say on a personal note, um, I'm a huge fan, and your music is the reason why I'm really wow. politically active. So. Oh man, that's dude. That's like the biggest compliment. I I thank you so much, and yeah, I mean that always like I always find that really inspiring to hear from people. So. Um, when I do hear that, that's really special. So thank you. No worries, man. Uh, thank you because like you guys got me into music properly, and uh, including what what you talk about in your lyrics really kind of spoke to me as a kid, and I just carried it through. Now I'm 27. I've been a fan of yours for like wow. 15 years. So. Wow, that's really cool, man. I mean, I had the same experience with you know bands like The Clash and and the Dead Kennedys and bands like that. So. That uh, that means a lot to me. So that's that's really cool, though. It's it is like a really amazing thing that you can kind of find this music, and you know, there's something about it that you relate to, and it has that kind of life changing effect on you. And uh, and you know, I kind of I sort of from finding those kind of bands and having that kind of experience myself, I I knew that I really wanted to have a band and do a band so that's, that's really cool fantastic okay well you guys have been around for ages you know and uh you just released a, a new album there um earlier on this year what kind of direction have you gone in like what what caused the, the little bit of a shift because you're doing uh different things vocally now and all that kind of stuff um well you know the reaction has been really 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 strong to this record and in, in a positive way um which is exciting for us, you know. I mean, this is, you know, it, it's probably been the best reaction that we've had um, to a record since probably for Blood and Empire. So <laughs> uh, there's been a few records in between there. And, you know, one thing I've definitely learned over time is that, you know, you, you never know how people are going to react to a record. You know, you always you hope for the best, but you just don't know. Mm. And uh, so when people do react in a really positive way, that's always really exciting. Okay. And uh, one thing that I've noticed as well, particularly f you mentioned uh, for Blood and Empire, y y the direction has moved away from the Iraq war to um, Occupy Wall Street and all that kind of stuff. Your music and your lyrics seems to be evergreen and coming more and more true. What's the band's stance on the world now like? Well, I think the world now is pretty fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, I mean, there's, you know, um, you know, historic wealth inequality right now. Um, you know, and, and I think that that is an issue that we have to um, be aware of and, and talk about and deal with. Um, but even even more though than talking about the issue of wealth inequality, it's, it's sort of a, a question of, of looking at you know um, the morality of of being able to make billions of dollars while there are people who you know have who, who don't even have the the basic necessities to survive. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, that's a reality in our world right now. And, you know, the idea that um, as a, a species that we're allowing that to, uh, to to take place, I think, really means that we've lost our way. Um, and, and then in the same breath, I, I would include, you know, the destruction of our planet um, as something that is 100% related to to the issue of unbridled uh, greed, um, because we're we're destroying our planet at, at you know an unprecedented rate, um, and that just ties into the kind of profit taking that uh, that is happening in the world right now, mm. and you know it's a and we're just in this race to the bottom. For people to have as much wealth as possible at any expense, including the expense of our planet. And I'm not just talking about, uh, 
you know, human made uh, global climate change, which I, I totally think is happening, but also talking about the destruction of our rainforests, the uh, uh, destruction of our oceans. You know, I, I think that when we look back um, in history, you know, if, if the human race is able to survive after what we're doing to the planet, um, people are going to look back and just ask how were, how did we let this happen? You know, how did this time period where we're just destroying the planet, how did we let that happen? Mm. Um, you know, uh, there's a, there's a, a movie called The Cove. You might be familiar with it. Yes. Um, but it, well, the same director who made The Cove just made a new movie called um, Racing to Extinction. Right. And it's about it's about what I was just mentioning, you know, the destruction of the planet. And, you know, there's a quote in that movie where somebody, you know, says that, um, it says that World War II will just seem like a footnote in history compared to what we're doing to our planet right now. Yeah. And you know if we if we continue in this direction that we're we're in big trouble. So so I mean those are some important things obviously you know and we um you know what the debate is over it's a song where we talk about the issue of of destroying the planet and you know we open up the record with um, with fabled world where we're talking about wealth and equality and and, and the I you know sort of this this fable that we're fed that. Everybody has an equal opportunity to to do well, and, and you know the reality is that the, the the deck is really stacked, and it's just not the case. Yeah. Uh, well, that's one thing I got definitely when I was listening to the album that there is a sense of um, wealth equality, and it, it seems to be coming from the lack of coverage in the media. You know, that's one thing that your music always hit for me is the fact that you guys talk about things that nobody does at all. Well, and one of the things that has always been strong, a strong theme for us is how controlled the media is and, and the things that the media won't touch. Mm. Um, and uh, that is, um, you know, it's still, it's still a huge problem. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we really have a press machine now that is much more interested in in profits than you know than than kind of doing the kind of journalism that um, that creates change and and you know brings issues that really need to be discussed uh, to the forefront and there I mean that said there there are journalists who who do that great kind of journalism still and who do the hard work and um, you do more than just fluff pieces or, you know, just following whatever Donald Trump says, you know. Yeah. Um, the Intercept, is, the Intercept is a really great news outlet. Um, you know, Democracy Now. Mm. Um, so there, there are definitely some independent news outlets that, that are, are doing the kind of work that is important, but they, they definitely don't have the same reach as, you know, a lot of like, uh, media outlets that like, you know, Rupert Murdoch has, for example. So even if, even if you don't want to buy that there's a conspiracy in the media to, to not talk about certain things, you know, even if you don't think it's, it's politically motivated, there's definitely, um, I, I would argue, a, a uh, motivation in the media to and focus on Big Brother or yeah. something along those lines, you know, reality TV, because they they believe that that's where the money is versus, yeah. you know, uh, really hitting on some really important issues. And speaking of the important issues, um, one thing that really struck me in general is the fact that you guys not only have, you know, really, really well-constructed songs, uh, the, I'm a bass player, so the bass lines that you guys have took many many hours of my teenage years trying to learn them because they're so so incredible <laughs> um but yeah. not only songs but also ev- for every song they're, they're linked to you know research papers and books and stuff like that so you guys have a perfect balance you know yeah yeah well i mean 
yeah, you know, like the record comes with like a 28 page book on it. Um, and we, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a panel and, and an essay or, or some kind of inspiration for each of the songs. And, um, and, you know, that was important for us to, in a, in a lot of ways. I mean, we wanted people to have a little bit more of an understanding of what might, may have inspired us when we wrote a song. And, and also maybe just, it's just, it's another opportunity beyond, you know, a three minute song to kind of turn people on to some, um, onto, you know, some kind of, um, ideas that, ideas or, or thinkers, you know, mm. uh, that, um, that we wouldn't be able to express as much in the song. And like, for example, um, the essay for Fabled World, um, was written, uh, it's an excerpt from, uh, Dr., or uh, from Dr. Cornell West. He, um, is an activist and, uh, scholar. And, uh, he, um, you know, he's somebody that's really influenced my thinking a lot over the last 10 years or so. And, um, by including, you know, an excerpt of his essay in our booklet, um, you know, it just gives me an opportunity to turn more people on to him. Hmm. So, you know, we're always looking for opportunities to expose people to to new ideas or, or people who have given us, you know, new new perspectives and new ways of seeing things. And it works. It works, you know, uh, again, you know, as a, yeah. as, a, as, a as a 13, 14 year old kid picking up a, a CD and like loads of stuff just falls out and you're like, oh, I'm going to read all this. You know, it has a, it has an impact, you know, particularly. Right, right. When it when everything's moving digital now, you know it's cool to actually get a nice meaty release, you know. So I'm glad you guys are still doing it. Yeah, 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 totally. And you know, and I think in a way, people, you know, because everything is digital, so many artists have just kind of given up on packaging and and you know an opportunity to uh, you know put something together that is exciting and interesting beyond just the music and to make the um, release uh, like a really full piece of art that's really multi-dimensional mm. and um, you know so we kind of we we didn't want to fall into that trap on this record we, we kind of wanted to go the full distance and put together something that when we were young just like you're talking about you know uh, we would you know something that we would pick up and that would really inspire us yeah well, I I really like this record. I think you know I would follow what a lot of people said. I think it's probably your best uh, from uh, from Blood and Empire. You know, it's it's just one of those records that sticks with you long after you finish listen to it. Oh, that's nice to hear. Yeah, I uh, I really I do think it's it's a it's a good record. I mean, I think we we put a lot of work into it, and I I was really happy with the results what's it like uh working with the guys still um how are you guys as a band is the creativity still flowing uh for more records or are you going to be touring this one for a while well i mean i think it's easier for us to write music and to write songs now and, okay um just because we're better musicians where we've been writing songs now for a lot of years and you know, it's like any other craft, you know, the longer you work at it, I think you have the potential to, to improve at it. And, you know, luckily, I, I think we've been able to hang on to the, our edge and, and still, um, you know, make music that is exciting. Um, so, you know, in a way, as a band, I think we're the best band we've ever been, mm. um, especially live. I mean, I, I think that we're just such a fine-tuned kind of machine. Yeah. Um, and uh that that's really exciting for me um so in a way it's more fun to play any anti-black now than than it's ever been Brilliant. um you know whether we'll make another record or not i i really couldn't say to be honest with you. i i think we probably will but you know i this one is so fresh and so new i mean it only came came out in april so yeah um I'm kind of I'm kind of still in that that mode, mode of yeah just, just well just the you know the of um we just started playing these songs like live you know like it's they're still really fresh and new to me so I'm still just kind of in the mode of 
<clears throat> playing out on this record and enjoying that. And how are they f- how are they fitting into your live set? Are you, are you happy um, with how they flow with the rest of the older songs? Or if someone's going to go see Anti Flag, what should they expect? Well, we've been try- You know, when we do a headline gig, we probably try to fit in about five to seven new songs. Okay. Um, you know, and if we get a, if we get any special requests, we'll try to do more. I mean, a lot of releases, and you know, I, there are songs that when people come to see us, they, you know, are really hoping to hear, and you know, we're aware of that. So we definitely have a core set of songs that we we usually play live. Um, but by the same token, you know, we are excited about the new record, so we we want to make sure that we we play a good few songs off of that. Okay. Um, you know, but but I'm aware. I mean, I've gone to see bands who put out a new record, and all they did was play the new record, and that's, even for for me, like that's pretty disappointing. So, <laughs> you know, like we don't we don't want to fall 100 percent into that trap. Right. I understand the I understand the uh, lore of doing that for a band because you you have not you have this new thing and you're really excited about it but mm. um but we're aware that, you know, people want to hear Turncoat and this is the end and the press corpse, you know. So yeah, yeah. like there are there we there are other songs in our catalog that are important to people and and that it, quite frankly that we enjoy playing too. Yeah. Well on a on a personal note the song that really stuck with me and uh I use a lot in my own music actually is um repeated uranium is a war crime i just i love oh, wow. I, I love what you guys did for that it just opened up my world man and i'm just like i love that song so much you know wow that's really cool yeah that's really great it's awesome um and finally i have a, a, a just a question on touring are you going to be coming to the uk and ireland anytime soon well, we'll be in the UK coming up here pretty soon. Sweet. Um, and so I guess the question is, yeah, we will be <laughs> in the next month, actually. Great. So, um, we're playing. We're playing the London Warp Tour coming up. Okay. And then, um, and then we'll be at, from there. We do headline dates all, all around Europe, and um, we'll be doing dates. Uh, yeah, in the UK. Unfortunately, no, no Ireland on this trip. That's unfortunate. I saw you guys the last time you were here, and you're fantastic. Ah, uh, cool. Thank but, you. Uh, that was a really fun. That was a really fun time. I really enjoyed that. Were you Were you doing? Uh, w- which show were you at? That was in the Olympia. Taste of Chaos tour. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a nasty day. I remember that the show was in Dublin, right? Yeah. And it was like raining sideways. It was like really savage. <laughs> yeah, that's Ireland for you. It rains constantly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. But uh, I want to thank I want to thank you for your time, Justin. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, of, of course. Hey, really nice talking to you. Thanks for taking the time. No, definitely. It's it's uh it's been an honor and a privilege, and I will try to make it over to see you guys in the UK because you're one of my favorite bands and one of my biggest influences. So this has been fantastic. Awesome, dude. I hope to see you in the pit, man. Definitely. Listen, take care, man. Hey, brother. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.